Gossi is going to be our next speaker. She is a former mathematics teacher of Rosefield Technical High School in Campton Park, east of Johannesburg. She has gained a vast experience in the corporate and education sector for more than 23 years. After completion of her postgraduate studies, she holds a bachelor's of education with honors degree and a master's degree in mathematics education from the University of Witwatersrand. She is a critical scholar and an academic who embraces change within the 4IR and passionate about developing 21st century teachers who is continuously driving technology with their pedagogies and teaching approaches. Let's go ahead and welcome Annie on board. Go. Good afternoon, good uh, evening, good morning to everyone that has joined the call today. And uh, I just want to say welcome to the Digital Learning Africa Conference. My name is Annie Hossi. I am from Mencosa School of Education. I'm a mathematics academic. So today I would like to take you through my presentation. And my presentation is about increasing digital learning and student access to technological tools in mathematics education. Okay, so if you have any questions, you will post them in the chat as we go along. So now guys, uh, once again, welcome. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy my presentation. So today my agenda is as follows. How to increase student access to technology. That is the first thing I would like to speak about. What digital tools can be used to advance student learning? How to enhance digital learning and student access in mathematics? And we can also just look at what are those going to be the implications of increasing digital learning and student access to technological tools in mathematics classroom. So on my next slide, I have put there to say, I'm looking more at the broader objectives, okay? The broader objectives in terms of, I'll uh, go back to that slide, apologies. The broader objectives in terms of how to, to have student access or give student access to technology. So firstly, what are those objectives? The main important things that we are looking at is, uh, critical thinking, how technology advances students' critical thinking through active learning orientation, or it helps with active learning orientated and focus, and how creativity also plays a role in that, looking at the goal task learning, and how we're looking at collaboration, which brings about performance learning and communication in terms of differentiation and uh, social emotional focus. So now I'm looking at the first one here, which is on my uh, left hand side, which is critical thinking. So critical and creative thinking involves students thinking broadly and deeply using skills, behaviors, and dispositions such as reason, logic, resourceful, imagination, and innovation. Students will be encouraged to solve real world problems while they build onto conceptual understanding. So now in this case, as we see, we're talking about innovation. It's always imperative in the mathematics education or in mathematics that we also realize the need for us to have our pedagogical content knowledge matched with the technological um, you know, part of it. So hence, we are talking about innovation. In, and in essence, the 21st century um, kind of learning now allows our students to learn through the use of technology and it really needs or requires our students or our teaching and learning to help to happen through technology. And now creativity, coming to creativity, we're looking at creativity will be able to encourage by allowing students to try out ideas, students will be allowed to experiment with their ideas in a mathematics classroom. But how do students do that in a mathematics classroom? How do they uh, try out their ideas? How do they even share their ideas. They will do that as well through the use of technology. Basically now, what is important is to look at those digital tools that allows them or that gives them that privilege of using technology in the understanding of mathematics. The other issue is looking at collaboration and collaboration goes with performance learning, as I've explained earlier on, to say that cooperation among disciplines provides realistic dynamics and influences that allow students to learn how to accommodate to the real world. So students will work in teams 
That allows for collaboration, which will increase performance and initiatives as they will have meaningful learning. I will elaborate further on some of the things as we go to the next slides. So communication, uh, differentiation, and social emotional focus. Digital learning will also allow students to better understand people and mathematical concepts rooted in the discipline perspectives and also culture so they can communicate and work with one another while they still maintain their own uh, identity. You know, digital uh, learning will involve some digital tools. And I just want in the next slide also to look at how to increase uh, student access to those digital tools. So once again, through that creative thinking, active learning, and through the creative goal task learning and communication differentiation and collaboration performance learning. As you can see in these pictures here, you see that under creativity, where we're looking at goal task learning, definitely technology is, is taking, um, is playing a, a huge part or an integral part in ensuring that there is some creativity that is taking place. And at the same time, if we look at the active learning, Learning, whereby the active learning comes from the constructivism theory, where we are saying that our students can be able to construct their own learning as well. So as they construct their own learning, technology will also play a certain role. Our digital tools will come in handy for our students to be able to use active learning. And in communication, where we are also addressing the issue of differentiation, that comes also handy in terms of looking at how we com communicate through technology. You know, how do we communicate? Like, for instance, at the moment, how am I communicating with you in another world? Am I communicating with you in another world through what? Through technology. And di differentiation in class will also happen like that because of the fact, as I mentioned, that now, teaching and learning is happening mostly remotely and is happening through technology. And if it's happening through technology, there are those digital tools that allows that kind of communication to happen between a teacher and a student and between a lecturer and a student. So that's how we communicate now uh, looking at what is required by the fourth industrial revolution and the 21st century uh, teaching and learning. So now we're also looking at collaboration and performance learning. So if we're looking at collaboration and performance learning, once again, that will involve the element of technology because with technology, this is the only time people can be able to collaborate the ideas through technology. And even if they are not in the same room, that could still happen. We, we, we see that happening also through the breakout rooms where we have different people in, in different worlds, but they can go into the same breakout room and collaborate ideas through the same breakout room. And they will still come up with concrete ideas and they will still be able to learn as required. So I'm gonna move to the next slide. In my next slide, I'm looking at what is um, how, in, in, in this regard, I'm looking at how we're looking at the active, uh, um, you know, how what is active? Uh, basically, how do we look at technology as something that is active uh, learning to, to help our students? So firstly, I just want to just quickly elaborate on that active learning. Active learning is known to be an umbrella term for learning and teaching methods which put the student in charge of their own learning through meaningful activities. As I've explained, that involves constructivism. They think about and apply what they are learning in a deliberate construct to passive learning. So that can happen um, in full circle where we are having technology involved because that kind of active learning can progress into technology where the student is starting to use some of the digital tools to learn. Like for instance, if I'm talking mathematics, uh, uh, in terms of mathematics, I could be talking about a student who's able now to use GeoGebra, who's able now to use Desmos. And with those, then the, that student is gaining some knowledge while they are learning, they are applying the active learning. They are making their learning to be meaningful as they, 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 they use technology, which is some of the mathematics applications that they can actually use. And now the second thing that I like to look at 
is the active learning engages students in the process of learning through activities or discussions in class as opposed to passive learning to an expert. It emphasizes high order thinking and often involves group work. So I've mentioned the issue of breakout rooms where we're looking at uh, students being in breakout rooms and they are starting to talk about ideas. And we can also use um, some of the digital tools called pet petlets where these students can voice out their their opinions, their views as they are discussing, and they can voice it out through the digital tools such as um, Padlet, where they can write their opinion and have a discussion about it afterwards. So that is still part of active learning. And the other part of active learning is when we're looking at active learning, it's a specific learning technique that requires students to engage in various meaningful activities like working together with peers, apply new practice, and thinking on a deeper level about the concepts they are learning. In mathematics, we like to have our students to, to go into that direction. This is where now we are trying to push our students in taking into consideration the, 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 the aid of technology, the aid of digital tools to ensure that at the end of the day, they have those meaningful activities where they're working together as peers, where you can use the, 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 the share pair them uh, kind of an activity and then they work together, they will still come up with a deeper level of the concept that they are learning in mathematics. And the other one is active learning implies that students are engaged in their own learning. So there's not much of teacher uh, telling. It's more like teacher facilitation. It's more like teacher scaffolding for the students. So active teaching strategies have students to do uh, something other than taking notes or following directions. So once again, we see how students take ownership of their learning in this regard. So as they participate, they construct new knowledge, they build new scientific skills, as per Handelsman ETL 2007. And instructional activities involve students in doing things and thinking about what they are doing. So once again, that also formulate part of the active learning. So in this next one, I'm just, I just put some of the types of active learning that uh, everyone can look into, like case-based learning, scenario-based learning, problem-based learning, activity-based learning, role-play, peer review, gamification, and simulation, and debating. Now, if I'm looking at what digital tools can give those students access into learning, so I'm looking at some of the digital tools uh, that we can use. Digital, firstly, looking at the digital learning itself. Digital learning is more than just providing students with a laptop. Digital learning requires combination of technology, digital content, and instruction. Digital learning guarantees more participation from students as the current generation of students are technological savvy and well versed with using te digital technologies. Therefore, it comes handy for them to use technology, to use these digital tools, because then it means we are catering for this generation, as we are also catering for the 21st century teaching and learning by using digital learning. And these are some of the digital learning environment that we can look at. Now let's look at mathematical, technological, digital tools. Which tools can we use in mathematics? Haiku Deck is a valuable online resource for students to create projects and presentation. Poplet is an online resource that students can use as a thinking map to visualize and map out mathematical concepts. Mentimeter simplify the creation of presentation, collecting data in real time and optimizing data analysis. Padlet is a reliable mind mapping tool, easy to use and intuitive interface and free online bulletin board solution. The mind mapping tool helps streamline the creation of an online bulletin board that you can use to gather and exhibit data on different topics. We also have PICAS, which is a powerful online tool that allows teachers to do formative assessment data. I'm almost at the end of my presentation. How do we enhance that kind of um, digital learning uh, or access for students into digital learning? So we can advance it or enhance it by the use of collaboration through online breakout rooms. I've mentioned that before. And now I think more than anything, we can also use MS Teams. And MS Teams is, MS Teams is such a powerful tool where you can even create your classes, just like Google uh, Classrooms. MS Teams, you can 
have uh, create be able to create quizzes, have forms uploaded that you can assign to students to use while being able to track their progress, teach them, grade and provide students with real-time feedback. We can use GeoGebra and Desmos, I've also mentioned that, to stimulate students learning in geographic, geographic uh, ge geometric graphs, 2D, 3D shapes and trigonometry and other mathematical concepts. So um, digital tools are now becoming the thing that we must consider as we are into teaching and learning or that we must consider as part of digital learning. So you, we can use Nearport, Mentimeter, Padlet to create quizzes that can stimulate and enhance students' access to digital learning. We can use Kahoot to make learning interactive for students where they can learn in collaboration. So these are the tools that I wanted to share with you. With the limited time that I have, I wish I could have gone further. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that has joined this call. And I hope this information was of value. It was valuable to you. Thank you. My name is Annie Hossi, as I've said. Thank you. Okay, I am seeing some of the chat questions. I think uh, we have five minutes to do the questions now. So I'm seeing some of the chat questions that um, have been asked. And the first one is what could be the solution for the students in far areas where there is no access to electricity power and also they are being literate, okay? And they are also being, um, I'm sorry, I just want to start again because I think I've lost that question as my screen changed. Okay, uh, just please a moment. How, what could be the solution for the students in far areas where there's no access to electricity power and also them being literate about technology? For example, in the far areas of Uganda. Okay, thank you so much, Powell, for that question. This is a, a very important question. This is quite significant because this is a question that we also had debates, ongoing debates about. So where we are looking at those areas, how do our students access? Access uh, the technology part and use the digital tools. Fortunately, if you look at it, Powell, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. We also realize that there is, uh, there are now, uh, you know, power systems that are being implemented in such rural areas or in such remote areas. So that still allows us to have a bit of access to some of the electricity. However, we also have now those hand uh, routers uh, that we can use to connect. And we also have, most of the people have cell phones and uh, with the network being advanced, that can also help. I know that it could be that it's not altogether um hundred percent reliable but some of the students are able to use that and um, i think that is as far as i can think about it uh not unless somebody maybe in the audience would like to also have an input about that okay i don't know if i have answered the question if i can go to the second one i don't know somebody can just this indicate to me uh, hi, Miss Annie. Thank you. Uh, I think we need to have a hard stop now. We'll uh, pose the questions uh, uh, on the email. Okay. All right. So I uh, can't take the second question. Are we done? Thank you so much, uh, Annie. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for being uh, there with us. Well, we will uh, send you across the questions uh, and you can go ahead and mail it uh, to the respective delegates. Yeah. Thank you so I will much. Do that. It's a pleasure having you. I will do that. Thank you so much. And I also am grateful uh, to have sh shared my information on this platform, such a big platform. And thank you once again to the audience and thank you to the organizers. Much appreciated. Thank you.